people's stuff pulling. It starts out with uh, stuff that happened on Atheism TV because I politely pointed out that insulting other people and putting them down and using mental health disabilities to do it not good not it's not fair it's not supporting the people who don't identify as having um, mental health disabilities or challenges they're a lot more affronted a lot angrier and uh, they cuss than um, either schizophrenic queen nor I were <laughs> interesting uh, Atheism TV is being, I don't know who it is that's emailing me because they won't identify themselves as anything but Atheism TV. I don't know who it is. It's a sock account for 20 something people. No idea who I've been emailing with. But apparently the policy is, uh, if you think this last video was bad, next week's going to be worse because it's really going to be insulting people for having mental health disabilities. And it's homophobic. I finally wrote a letter of resignation because, you know, I'm trying to do real journalism. And to be associated with that kind of a poop circus, eh, I don't I don't want my name associated with anything like that. I wanted to do real journalism, you know. I was writing real news. And to try to make it an ad hominem thing, whoever was emailing me from Atheism TV actually said well after that outlandish story you did on the Jesus game I quoted a gaming reviewer who said that the game is an app on Facebook and the way you win is by click 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 and paying for stuff with real money like Farmville and the game reviewer also said, now if you really want to be an asshole, you can spam your friends list with Bible, random Bible verses. And I put that in because for one thing it's funny and for another thing it's a direct quote from the game reviewer and my editor had no problem with it but whoever this anonymous person was called it outlandish because I suppose that is supposed to be stockpiling evidence about how mentally unstable I am or unprofessional or uh, what a loose cannon I am. I was quoting a source. If they didn't want to use it, my editor would have told me so. So they're already trying to stockpile to discredit me. Oh, she's nuts. And the constant provocative comments from what you, James, oh, I can't remember his number. You, James, also made a stunningly fierce uh, defense of human rights regarding mental health. From, he called them fanboys. See, I don't hang around with trolls. I won't go to 4chan. I won't go to um, Reddit because, well, after I heard that what a bunch of atheist men did because a woman posted a picture of herself having gotten Carl Sagan's Demon Haunted World from her theist mother and the horrible comments about raping her. I won't, I won't go to Reddit and I won't go to Fortran because, you know, I'm mentally healthy and I'd like to stay that way. And I'm under a lot of stress. I'm in the middle of trying to move four or five hundred miles. I can't be part of gutter garbage, you know. I. I can't. I have so little credibility and my resume is so old and I'm working so hard to reestablish my career and I really need to do serious journalism and not be part of that dog and pony show. That was just ignorant. Update on what's going on. People have been we're generous and we're generous quickly. I'm paying the rent tomorrow. I already told Henrietta that I would like to sit and have a cup of coffee with her someplace not here. I want to talk to her about the way her husband's behaved toward me. Um, again, somebody trying to provoke me into 
acting out so they have an excuse. I won't give them satisfaction. It drives them nuts. Uh, but stuff like see me coming to his house in a snowstorm in my pajamas, look right at me and slam the door in my face. His arguments are based on emotions, and mine are based on facts. He hates me for that. It drives him crazy. Cop mentality, you know? My view of the world is right, and you'd better kowtow. You're not a cop anymore, boy. And that born-again stuff. How he has convinced himself that I'm a member of a religion. A woman that used to live across the lot was pagan. And she had a coexist flag. I had a coexist flag out in the yard here. So he put two and two together and came up with 13 and decided I'm a pagan, which means I'm a witch, which means I'm satanic. He also didn't like this doll. Hold on. I got this doll from some hippy dippy type people in um, Albuquerque years ago at a yard sale. I really liked it. It's from India. And uh, when you turn it around, it's female. So I really like this little doll. I had it hanging in a tree outside. He freaked out. He looks at it with such fear, like it's some kind of pagan idol. Uh, I also had a little Guatemalan doll. I can't show you that because she's hanging in the truck. Just a little Guatemalan doll, or Central American, I don't know if she's Guatemalan, wearing a rather large headdress and a little skirt little cotton rag doll, and he, I mean, he'd look at it with so much contempt and fear. You know, I have museum pieces in here. I don't surround myself with crap. I have nice things in here. I like beauty. I like diversity. I'm interested in all kinds of cultures and all kinds of sciences and arts and I did shoot a little bit of film of the fact that the greenhouse is being dismantled. I'm dismantling it uh, and uh, packing the truck and uh, saving my potting soil. I know that sounds silly, but potting soil is not cheap. And I, if I can possibly grow any food for this year when I get where I'm going, I'm going to try. So I'm saying I have some big giant stubs. You'll see them in the video. And I have a pair of old kettle drums, timpani from the high school band when I lived in Fort Sumner that got thrown in the dump and I asked the guy who runs the dump, oh I hope I'll get him in trouble, but I asked him if I could have them, he said yeah. Um, they're, they're coated with a sheet, thin sheet of copper coating, so they're big old timpani drums, you know, and they make great planters. volunteer. There's some either gourds or pumpkins. I'm not sure which yet. Could be cantaloupe too. Something viney and large. Um, there's some shoots. Some of them about, can you see this? About this tall. Some of them only about that tall with the little baby airplane leaves on. I'm going to try to save them. I'm not saying I can, but I'm going to try. I spent $250 the other day on a tuna. And the mystery has been solved. I was right about two things. I'm so proud of myself. The first thing was, I was pretty sure the spark plugs weren't firing right. But it was weird because when spark plugs are old and wearing out, you get a miss because one of the plugs won't fire. You can hear that. You can hear that missing. And I wasn't getting that, but I, I really felt like the spark plugs weren't firing right. Well, it turns out the plugs that were in the damn thing were small enough they could power my gasoline-powered bicycle, and they were gapped wrong. 
So, not enough compression, which means not enough force to drive the engine, and wasting a lot of gas because they weren't burning all the gas. So the plug, I thought, you know, sometimes after driving it for a while, it smelled like raw gas. And I was pretty sure the plugs weren't firing. So I got that part right. The other thing was, I thought, there's something going on with the exhaust. I think things are, I think air is coming in, but I don't think the exhaust is getting out. And that'll make an engine die. If you, in, if it can inhale and can't exhale, it, you know, it sputters out and dies. I've been hearing this rattling sound by the exhaust. I just figured it was a loose clamp that holds the exhaust pipe and where the muffler on. Well, the guy worked on it and he pulled it out of the garage and, and he said, it's a catalytic converter. I hear it. There's something in there broken and loose. And what it is is, okay, here's the catalytic converter, which looks a little bit like a muffler. And there's a pipe coming from the engine to the catalytic converter and then a pipe from the catalytic converter to the muffler. So something inside, I should hold my hand to say that. Something inside is, say that's for the exhaust, okay? This is for the engine, that's for the exhaust. Okay, there's the catalytic converter. And there's something inside that's loose, and it's rattling around, and every once in a while, it clogs up the exhaust. Well, I asked my neighbor, my nice neighbor, if he would drill some holes in it. He's afraid to do it, because he's afraid I'll get carbon monoxide. And I'm thinking, with the windows rolled down and the truck driving, I don't think... I'm going to die of carbon monoxide. So, he, clap, Goxter, I don't know if they got catalytic converters out there in Bulgaria, or if you've ever seen one. It's sheet metal. It's about the thickness of a, uh, uh, it's tough. It's about the thickness of a muffler. Um, do you have any ideas how I can cut that open? I don't, I can't take it off. I know that. I can't afford to replace it can't afford to buy a bunch of tools. I have a Dremel tool, one of those little teeny tiny hand saws. If I was real careful with that, could I cut it with a grinding bit? Or should I just use, I don't have a fancy drill, I don't have a hammer drill. It's just a regular old cheap Black & Decker reversible cordless drill. doesn't have much power. Uh, it, could I drill a few holes in it? to get some air in there. What I was kind of hoping I could do was make a little trap door so I could open it up, reach in there, and get out what it was ever in there, close it up again, and drill a couple of holes and tie it shut with wire. So if you have any ideas what I do about the cat, let me know. Um, it's a 91 Ford F-150 pickup truck. If you want to look it up online. If I'm living in a rural area, I don't have to go through an emissions test, so I don't have to worry about the cat. Nobody's going to inspect it. If I were living in Albuquerque or Santa Fe, I'd be in trouble. I didn't meet my goal for how much money I need to move, because I may have to hire somebody to haul this travel trailer. My truck isn't strong enough, and, you know, with these cost problems and stuff, besides, I don't want to try to drive everything I own out there by myself. I'll be a nervous wreck. It's a long haul on one of the major interstates in the United States that goes from coast to coast. <laughs> taking it up from, I'm about 5,000 feet elevation now, taking it up to 7,000 feet, pulling this 30-foot travel trailer that's way overloaded. And I don't know what kind of condition this truck is really in because it's, you know, it's only been mine for a year. And I'm kind of worried about the mechanical history if they're putting in the wrong size plugs. <laughs> so, anybody has any suggestions about how I can uh, get past that catalytic converter? Private message me, let me know. I heard from my friend about that job. Now, she is the general manager, but she's got a short list of candidates. I'm on it because I deserve to be on it, not because she's my friend. Um, uh, they're they're going to object because you're not in, you're not in this town, you're not here. I said, are they already complaining that I'm not there? 
I don't know when the job starts. Uh, maybe I could do 20 hours at the end of one week and 20 hours at the beginning of the other week and then come back here, take care of my cats, you know, until I can, you know, when I'm in that other town, I can scout around and look for a place to live. I don't know when the job starts. Does it start this month? Does it start next month? And now, of course, I'm, I've, I've asked her twice. Is the board already complaining because I'm not in that town? And right now she's not answering her email. She answered me once and said, I don't know about the job yet. I'll have to meet with them next week. Well, I know that. You already said that. But are they already complaining because I'm not living in that town? Boy, that is common on a video. Well, you've been living there a year and nothing has changed and... Why haven't you found another place to live by now? Well, genius, I'm 75 miles from, a, from the nearest urban area. There is no place to live out here. There are no jobs out here. And, you know, I've gotten a few little writing jobs and stuff in the, over the past year. But it's nothing consistent. So it's all little freelance stuff, you know. It's not like I have them working. So why, can't, why haven't you moved by now? Well, let's see. I live on $700 a month. I think the U.S. poverty rate for a single individual is about twelve or fifteen hundred dollars a month, so I'm well below the U.S. standards for poverty. But you know, I run out of food at the end of the month, and I can't afford to drive to the next town more than about once a month because it costs about ten dollars or so in gasoline. That would really screw up my budget. So how is it if I'm living at half the poverty level, $700 a month, and I'm paying more than half of it in rent and paying back for this trailer and the truck out there? At least, and then there's my bills. That leaves me with about $100 cash a month for food, clothing, gasoline, you know, everything. And this person said, well, you haven't done anything in a year. Oh, for crying out. The person saw the video where I pulled my own shoe. Well, now this person has decided to troll me. Uh, it's not my problem. I don't have to justify myself. I don't have to defend myself. So if you can't be supportive, why don't you just leave? And the person said something else cockeyed, so I blocked the person and I removed the comments from my video. Because... Why? That I'm e-begging and I'm lazy and I'm not re I really don't have disabilities because you have a degree in psychiatry from where? Not that I trust psychiatry, but based on what? Based on your own suspicious, cynical nature? Come on, man. Oh, yeah, you got the dirt on me. But mostly it's just been... Oh, God, you little fanboy, shut up. So that's the update. I haven't thanked everybody individually because it all piled in at once, for one thing. And for another thing, I've been so busy working, and then I come in here and I'm just exhausted. And then, you know, I've neglected uh, Gender Queer Atheist on YouTube because I was spending time on atheism TV and writing for them and doing all the research. So I need to go back to gender career atheist because that should be my first priority. I let myself get diverted. Trying to have some influence in media beyond the scope of my little channels. But it's true what James says about the fanboys and ah, that dog piling stuff and the way they treated schizophrenic queen, there's no excuse for it. I saw the comments they left as different. There's no excuse for that. You find something about somebody you think is the weakest and you exploit it. It's cruelty for sport. I've never understood that. It's bullying. They'll rant and rail about some pastor talking about putting a fence around queer people because it's anti-church. No rail about that stuff, but man, you tell them, uh, excuse me, you're doing it too? Over something like disability rights? 
women's rights. I'm sorry. I'm one little teeny tiny human being. I'm working as hard and as fast as I can. I'm completely exhausted. Trying not to let myself get demoralized. Trying to be optimistic, you know, as I'm sorting and organizing. All I can do is hope. I'm going to plan to move out there whether I get that job or not, but housing. There's a little town between here and there. It's about 50 miles from that town. Little go on a reservation, on a Pueblo reservation. And there's an RV park there that charges three, three, $10 a night. So that'd be 300 a month about. I don't know if they have a monthly rate or not. And I'll try to find out what they might have available. I really need to have that job. For my own self-esteem, I need to have that job. It's not about the money. News writing again, public service, being part of a community, providing to that community. I really need it. But if it doesn't happen, I'm trying to prepare. I'm trying to prepare. I've had my heart broken so many times. I ought to be used to it by now. And I had to go through it all alone with nobody to talk to about it. Thank you very much. Those of you who have been emotionally supportive, intellectually supportive, and financially supportive, and just been funny and encouraging and silly and profound and thank you. It means a hell of a lot to have this community. It really does. I go out there into town and don't feel like I fit in. I come back in here and I get on the internet and people are waiting to talk to me. Thank you. Bye.